Hello, this is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to talk to you about Joseph Sook's Azrael Symphony. Hot stuff, right? Azrael, as you may know, is the mythological angel of death. And this piece was really a personal confession for Sook because he wrote it in the wake of the death of his wife, who was Dvorak's daughter, and then Dvorak himself in 1904. So a year later, he turned his grief outward, as it were, and produced this symphony, a five-movement masterpiece in which he takes the death theme from Dvorak's Requiem. You know, it's that little four-note chromatic twist. It goes something like that. I think that was pretty good. That was pretty close for me. And and he uses that as the death as the death motto that permeates the symphony. Now the five movements are interestingly arranged. The first movement is a very, very turbulent, absolutely gripping exordium that works itself up to an incredible climax with pounding bass drum and wailing chromatic strings with the brass roaring out the death theme and it's oh it's 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 just wonderful it'll send a shiver down your spine or it should if the performance is right and we'll talk about that in a minute the second movement is an interlude it's it's completely numb it's like a it's hard to describe it's sort of a meditation it's a lament but not terribly slow and in a sort of verse and refrain form the refrain of which is the death motive the central movement is a scherzo a spooky schattenhaft shadowy as mahler would have said kind of like the scherzo in mahler's own seventh symphony which was being written at almost exactly the same time the fourth movement is a very intensely moving slow movement and the fifth movement is another turbulent movement of finale which finally fights its way to an exhausted C major closing. And, you know, Sook himself said that you have no idea what that last C major chord cost me. I mean, it's just, it's just an incredibly moving piece of music. Very, very beautiful. It hasn't gotten much play or attention. I remember it was done here in New York a few seasons ago, maybe five, six, seven years ago. And the critics were like, ah, oh, it's a big flabby romantic. You know, it's like you wanted to kill them. Pardon me, I'm a critic. I shouldn't say that. But it was, you know, they were they were somewhat dismissive. It, it, it can't be dismissed. It's too personal and too intense and too emotionally gripping for that. But some people don't like emotionally gripping, especially these days when emotion seems to be out of fashion. But not for Joseph Sook, it wasn't. He was a wonderful, wonderful composer. Although after this horrible episode in which he lost his wife and his father-in-law, his music took a turn for the sad, the, towards the sadder, and also towards the much more complex and adventurous. A fascinating character, really a fascinating musical character. Maybe not a major figure, uh, in 20th century music generally, but certainly a major minor figure, if you want to call him that. Anyway, azrael has been recorded a surprising number of times. I have eight of them handy, and I'm going to dismiss out of hand three. Three. There, three. Those three are uh, Petranko's on CPO, which is good, but just not great. The Peshek on Virgin Classics, which is just so, kind of soft and a little bit a little bit flabby, which is surprising because his uh, A Summer Tale, the super fun one, not the later one, is fantastic. And Yerzy Bielohavec on Chandos, who's also just kind of pale and denatured, and not, it doesn't rise to the necessary climax. You know, you know Bielohavec was a a gentle conductor, just generally speaking. And in some music that worked wonderfully. In an expressionist nightmare piece like that, nah, forget it. So we're going to talk about the five really terrific recordings of Azrael. And choosing between them is, is almost impossible. And if you know and love the work, as I do, you want them all. <laughs> you just want to have them all because it's that kind of a piece. It, it's incredibly rich, richly textured 
it, it's emotionally giving and it presents a different side of itself with each performance. So it's impossible to choose, but I'll, I'll make a recommendation at the end and maybe it'll surprise you. But first, we have to start at the beginning with Václav Talich, who, who knew Suk personally and whose performance of Azrael, um, this one comes coupled with Dvorak Stabat Mater, is one of the greatest things he ever did. It's in mono, of course, but very, very good mono. It was well, well remastered for this for this release, and it sounds terrific, and the performance is totally a gut-wrencher. And you also can't help but feel that there's something personal in Talich's performance of this, too. Talich was, was uh, not always getting along well with the regime, and I kind of get the sense that this performance and the Dvorak Stabat Mater really, really meant a lot to him. They are his personal testament and sound, and you really owe it to yourself to hear them as a way, maybe not your first recording, but certainly one that matters. And if you like, you know, historical recordings, and want to hear the Czech Philharmonic in that vintage form, this is the way to go. Next, Václav Neumann also did it. And Neumann, of course, was a conductor who could sound kind of stiff, you know, but not in Azrael. It seems to be another piece that, that brought out the best in him. It's a very, very gripping, very exciting, very well played performance, digitally recorded, by the way, in, in, in very good sound. And it's, it's a knockout. It's just pulverizing with the climaxes and beautifully soft and flowing and, and intensely concentrated in the quieter moments. A lovely, lovely performance. And one that, you know, that was the piece that, I, where, that introduced me to Azrael. That was the performance, and it was the one that got me hooked, and it'll get you hooked too. But of course, there's Charles McCarris, the man who never made a bad recording, and this is quite similar to Neumann in some respects. Maybe maybe a little livelier. I don't know. I, I wouldn't say necessarily. It's a great performance, as McCarris always is, totally idiomatic, totally musical, totally in tune with the idiom. I find it fascinating, the man who was so wonderfully and pleasant, he was such a nice guy and a funny guy. You know, we, we hosted him at the, the Khan Classical Music Awards and, and uh, you know, and I spent quite a bit of time with him. He has one of my scores of Dvorak's opera, Kate and the Devil, I gave him one. And, uh, you know, we used to talk about things. He was just such a charming man. And then he can play this gut-wrenching music and just blow the roof off the place. That's what musical geniuses do. And he was one. So that's a recording worth considering, too. But there are two left here that are not by Czech people and that may be the best of the batch. I kid you not. First... Klaus Peter Floor on bis with the Malaysian Philharmonic Orchestra. Would you believe it? I didn't at first, but wow. I mean, Floor is Floor is very good with death, I have to say. Um, he, he, he tends to respond very well to death. And, and this performance of this work, he really responds well to death. I mean, it's it's tremendous. Of course, the bis engineering is always fantastic, but he's got that orchestra in Malaysia playing, playing as if their lives depended on it. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely wonderful. And, you know, don't sneer at this because of who it is. You'll be, you'll be shocked. You really will. Don't turn up your nose. However, however, if I had to pick one version, one version to take with me to the proverbial desert island. So I keep saying I would never go to a desert island. Why would anyone go to a desert island? I don't know. And bring a record and bring the Azrael Symphony. But the performance that I always turn to when I want to have the piece, hear the piece with a certain freshness and impact and, and guts and it's just, oh my God. Vladimir Ashkenazi with the Helsinki Philharmonic on Ondine. This is just a knockout. It's an SACD. Um, actually, so is the floor. These are both SACDs. But this is one of the best things Ashkenazi ever did. You know, I think he also had something 
a special feeling for music about death, especially kind of Slavic Russian style music about death. I mean, this symphony has elements that really do sound very, very Slavic and Russian, almost Tchaikovskyan in places. And you know, Ashkenazi did a great Tchaikovsky Patatik symphony. He did a great Rachmaninoff first. It's still the best one out there. And that, you know, has that fabulous motto, vengeance is mine, I will repay. <laughs> right? I mean, and this is kind of like that, you know? It's one of those pieces. It's dark, it's brooding, it's intense, it's violent, it's death obsessed. I mean, it's wonderful. What more could you want, you know? And and beautiful on top of it. Incredibly, incredibly beautiful and lyrical and heartfelt. And this performance just has it all. It truly, truly has it all. Vladimir Ashkenazi with the Helsinki Philharmonic on Undine for Sook's Azrael Symphony. Trust me, for, uh, trust me, you'll, 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 be, you'll be dazzled. You truly will be dazzled. But one way or another, you're going to want to hear the piece. It's, it's a magnificent, very, very little known work. And don't you think, I, I have to say, what really kind of blows me away is the fact that here we are in this day and age, and you can get eight recordings of the Azrael Symphony. I mean, is there anything so obscure that it hasn't been recorded multiple times by now? Anything? Anything? I mean, seriously, it's just it's just nuts. You know, there's a wonderful Sook disc that I'll talk about sometime probably with Joanne Folletta and the Buffalo Philharmonic on Naxos. I mean, Buffalo, they're playing Joseph Sook. It's wonderful. The sad thing is, you know, though, the sad thing is, is that people aren't doing them in concert. People do it for recordings. They make the recordings, but you don't hear it live. Maybe they'll do the piece in time because they're doing a recording, right? But then it just disappears and our concert life just stays the same, the same stuff played over and over and over. Oh, thank God for records. Thank God for labels like Ondine and Bis and Naxos and Superfon. Thank God we have all of this stuff to enjoy and hopefully someday have the opportunity to see live. Until then, we just keep on listening. Right, folks? Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this talk, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. But listen to the Azrael Symphony. It is a great, great piece of music. You won't be the same afterwards. I guarantee it. Thank you.